Hey there folks and welcome back. In our last lesson we learned about Green's theorem, an amazing result which allows us to evaluate line integrals over closed curves by rewriting them as double integrals of some sort of a derivative function. Today we're going to try out some more examples. Firstly, we're looking for the work done by the force field f of x y equals sine x x squared y on some particle as it moves from the origin to 2 4 along a straight line and then back to the origin along the parabola y equals x squared. Okay, there are lots of words in the statement of this problem, so it's helpful to draw a picture to see what's going on. We have a particle that starts at the origin, moves to the point 2, 4 along a straight line, so maybe it's moving over here, and then it takes the parabola y equals x squared back to the origin. So here's our parabola, and it's now following this path back to 0, 0. Okay, we've identified the path of our particle as it moves from the origin to 2, 4, and then back to the origin. To determine the total work done by our force field as our particle travels this path, we need to compute the line integral of f along this curve, which maybe I'll call c. We need the line integral along c of f dot dr. To compute this line integral, we have a few options. First, we could try to show that our vector field is conservative and then apply the fundamental theorem. That would give us an answer of zero, right? Because we're starting and ending at the same place. Uh, but in this example, it's not too hard to see that the vector field is not conservative. You can do this using the component test. If the vector field isn't conservative, then we can't use the fundamental theorem. What's our next option? Well, I guess we could use the definition of a line integral. Right? We could parametrize this curve C, use that parametrization to replace x and y with functions of t, then take the dot product of this thing with r prime t, oh, and then we still have to integrate. What a mess. Those calculations are usually long, and the integration can be pretty tricky. So let's try to avoid it if at all possible. Notice that in this example, though, we're integrating over a closed curve. The starting and ending points are the same which means maybe Green's theorem could be used. Green's theorem requires a simple, closed, piecewise smooth curve, and that's what we have, simple, closed, piecewise smooth, and it must be positively oriented, which means if we walk along the curve, the interior of the curve must be on our left. Wait a second, this curve isn't positively oriented. If we walk along this curve, you can see that the interior is actually going to be on our right. This curve is negatively oriented. So while we can't use Green's theorem to compute the line integral along C, we could use Green's theorem to compute the line integral along minus C, the curve moving in the opposite direction. So let's compute that line integral with Green's theorem and we'll touch up our answer at the end. By Green's theorem, the line integral along minus C of f dot dr is the same as the double integral over the region D, the interior here, of partial Q by partial X minus partial P by partial Y dA, where here P is this first function, sine X, and Q is the second function, X squared Y. Okay, well, partial P by partial Y, that's just zero. And partial Q by partial X, that's 2XY. So we've identified our integrand, we just need to figure out the bounds on this double integral. Well, you can see that the region D is of both type 1 and type 2. We could set up our bounds in either order. I'm going to choose type 1. If I draw an arrow pointing upward through this region, well, you can see that y is going to extend from x squared to this line here, which is y equals 2x, and all the while x is going from 0 to 2. Okay, we can write our double integral as the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from x squared to 2x of 2xy dy dx. At this point, I know you can complete the calculation. This is a straight up double integral and you should get a value of 16 over 3. That's the value of the line integral along minus c. We had to use minus c to apply Green's theorem. That means that the integral along C, the integral we're actually trying to compute, is the negative of the answer we just found. If we reverse orientation, the answer is multiplied by minus 1. So the integral along C of f dot dr 
is minus 16 over 3. To introduce our next example, I have some new notation for you. Sometimes you'll see an integral of a vector field with either a circle in the middle or an arrow moving in the counterclockwise direction. These notations mean the same thing. They indicate that we're taking a line integral, but specifically over a closed and positively oriented curve C. So it saves us from writing down these assumptions every time. With that said, we're ready to jump into our next example. Here, we're looking for the line integral along the curve C, C here is specifically going to be closed and positively oriented, of x cubed minus y squared dx plus e to the y plus x squared dy, where here C is the boundary of the square whose vertices are plus or minus 1, 0, and 0, plus or minus 1. So just as we did in the last example, we're going to start by drawing a picture. Okay, we know that our curve C is going to be a square passing through these four points. So it might look something like this. In addition, since our integral has this curved arrow through the middle, we know that we're giving this curve positive orientation. We're moving around the square in the counterclockwise direction. We now need to compute this line integral along our square path. Rather than setting up four parameterizations, one for each of these lines, why don't we recognize that we're integrating over a simple, closed, piecewise smooth, and positively oriented curve C. So Green's theorem applies. According to Green's theorem, this line integral is the same as the double integral throughout the interior, which maybe again we'll call D, of partial Q by partial X minus partial P by partial Y. We can obtain those derivatives using these expressions above. Partial q by partial x is simply 2x, and partial p by partial y is minus 2y. So according to Green's theorem, my line integral is the double integral over d of 2x plus 2y dA. All right, well, we need to set up this double integral. Ah, but look at this thing. This region is neither type 1 nor type 2. So I think we'll need to use a change of variables. We can see here that the region D is bounded between the lines y equals x plus 1, y equals x minus 1, y equals 1 minus x, and y equals minus 1 minus x. So using what you know about change of variables, if you move all the variables in these equations to one side, you'll see that x minus y and x plus y are both bounded between minus 1 and 1. So these will be good choices for the definitions of u and v. We'll set u equal to x plus y and v equal to x minus y. Of course, if we're going to do this change of variables, we also need the Jacobian. So we'll compute partial uv over partial xy, and we'll remember to invert this expression in the end. We get the determinant of, well, partial u by partial x is 1, Partial v by partial x is also 1. Partial u by partial y is 1. And partial v by partial y is minus 1. Taking the determinant gives us a value of minus 2. And hence our Jacobian partial xy over partial uv has a value of minus 1 half. All right, let's put this all together. Our double integral is really the integral from minus 1 to 1 of the integral from minus 1 to 1. And in here, you can see that we have exactly 2u. We multiply by the absolute value of our Jacobian, absolute value of minus 1 half, du dv. Well, the 2 and the 1 half are going to cancel. We have the integral from minus 1 to 1 dv times the integral from minus 1 to 1 of u du. And it's not too hard to check that this gives a value of 0.